What's up Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie, Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. So everything going on, you know, Wolverine having been dead, everybody trying to find him, the hunt for Wolverine, the return of Wolverine, all this stuff is going down. We finally got Return of Wolverine number one by Charles Soule and Steve McNiven. I don't know, don't know how I feel about it. This is one of those weird books where there's a lot going on, but there's also not a lot going on. It's this weird sweet spot. This book tugs in a lot of different directions, but before we get started, if this is your first time checking out my channel and you wanna see more awesome videos like this one, it only takes two clicks to become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. Click, click. In this book, we don't see much of the hot claws in this book. I mean, we see at the very beginning, we know they apparently burn him when he does use them, which, I mean, makes sense, because, I mean, even before all this, when he would pop his claws, he always said that it still hurt, even though yeah, he does have the healing factor, which also, mind you, his healing factor, as we have speculated since uh, this whole Hunt for Wolverine thing has started, that the healing factor is back. But one thing I will say about the hot claws is that I think I've warmed up you know, no pun intended, I've warmed up to the effect. The effect, it looks like they're glowing hot at first. After they pop, it seems like they just, you know, go back to normal, but they still kind of steam up a little bit, which, you know, that's whatever. So far, no explanation on how he has, you know, this ability now, why this is happening to him all of a sudden, though a popular theory making the rounds, and I want you to take this with a dump truck of salt, but I mean, it could be possible, is that his future self having the Phoenix Force at the end of time, as we learned from uh, the end of Thor number one when Marvel Fresh Start uh, became a thing. But you know, hey, who knows? In this book, Logan is struggling with his memories. He has no clue who he is, what he was, or why anyone would know him based on sight alone. The only thing he knows is that the name Soterra pops up more often than he's comfortable hearing, and every time he hears that name, something bad is attached to it. Specifically, Persephone, the mastermind behind Soterra, and the very person who made Logan's resurrection possible. We see at various points cells containing other people from Logan's past, mostly Sabretooth, Cyclops, Storm, Lady Deathstrike, but the weird part here is we also see past versions of Logan. We see him in his Weapon X era outfit with the, the trunks and the weird helmet and the calculator over his crotch. We even see his Hulk villain era suit from his first appearance in Hulk number 180 back in the day. Another one that also kind of sticks out to me too is a character who kind of appears to be an X-24 inspired version of Wolverine from the movie Logan. And seemingly just as mindless and feral, likely his rage bored up inside himself. We even see like a version of Patch in a more modern yellow and blue clad Wolverine. Plus we even get an anecdote about why he wears the colors yellow and blue, which I mean, I don't think this is something anyone actually needed to know. I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but I will go ahead and tell you right now, it's a very Batman-esque reason. It's kind of like, like basically long story short is that he was helping some people in a village and they were being gunned down by this guy wearing a mech suit. Now, I don't think the story was trying to say that he just mysteriously came up with the idea for the suit when this happened, but it was just the reasoning why he uses it is that these colors attract the attention of people and make them focus on him, which makes sense because he has a healing factor, so any damage they're throwing at him, he could take it. And it just, it, it's one of those things that's like, oh, that's cute, but you know, I, I didn't really need to know this. I mean, it's actually something I've always kind of assumed, and probably you, the reader, has always just assumed that that was the reason why. I will say it actually is not that dissimilar from why Batman has, or at least had up until recently, the big yellow symbol with the black bat in the middle on his chest is because that would draw criminals' attention to his chest whenever they would shoot at him, which is where he's most heavily armored. But it's kind of the same, but different at the same time. But at first glance, it would seem easy to say that the people that are in these cells are people that Persephone has resurrected slash cloned, since we learned from a hysterical doctor at the beginning of this book that she seems to be in the de-extinction game. But I'm gonna go ahead and say right now, the smart money says this is all in Wolverine's head, and these are memories he's yet to cope with and or confront. There's also a wall that has three circles painted on it that remain a mystery to Logan. 
Persephone knows what it is, but believes Logan is not ready to face that challenge yet, but this symbol pops up at various points in the book. It pops up on walls in the real world that, you know, he's looking at, and it even winds up on his new black costume that he's now sporting. At the end of the day, Wolverine is back, and in black. Oddly enough, and though he's hesitant to want to take on Soterra as a one-man army, he knows what they're doing is wrong, they are hurting people who have likely done nothing wrong, and more importantly, Soterra has done him wrong. And even if he's not going to do this for, you know, altruistic reasons like saving the innocent, the least he can do is get some damn revenge. Which is honestly kind of what you would expect from a character like Wolverine. And I, I mean, I, I like this because this is a Wolverine who's completely started over. He doesn't know who anyone is. He doesn't know why he's here. He doesn't understand anything. And it's like he's, it, it's almost kind of like we're getting that old Chris Claremont era Wolverine back. And it's like, I don't know how I feel about that either. But I will say, I know a lot of times in these videos, Videos, people usually start bagging on the art regardless of whether it's actually good or bad. I actually think the art in this book is decent, but there are parts in this book where I would disagree. And it's mostly with specific shots of Wolverine without his mask, which come more often than not. Especially since his new costume has no mask. But yeah, I think the hair, I mean, I, and I get it, you know, he's been you know, dead so the hair's, you know, grown out some, but it's like, man, you gotta, you gotta tame that fro down, man. It's like, not, like instead of having the Wolverine, like, spiky flow back hairdo, it's like he's got a Wolverine, like, fro. I don't know how I feel about that. But anyways, let me know what you think about Return of Wolverine number one. How, were, you, were you overwhelmed? Were you underwhelmed? Were you somewhere in the middle? Sound off in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, Hulk smash that like button. And if you want to see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell so you know when I post up. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I will see you all next time. Plus Ultra.